Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you back into the YouTube video. Today we're going to deep dive into XRP and my speculative price predictions for it. We're only really going to go from the like <coughs> TA and shorter time frames. Um, I'm not going to take into consideration um, any price action that might happen from a utility because I think that like changes things. For the whole time we've we've been in crypto, the whole time I've been in crypto, we're in speculative cycles. Um, any kind of utility that may or may not come through, which I obviously think it will, at some point I'm not taking into consideration here because we aren't in that phase of this asset class yet. We're in a speculative cycle, meaning that we're speculating that there will be utility in the future. Um, and you can see that like throughout the whole market. It's not really being used anywhere in the financial system yet. You can argue that XRP is probably the most utilized through their ODL corridors. But again, it's not really being priced into the market as well as um, as much as hype etc is. So we'll get straight into it. For those of you who don't know, um, I wrote an article for Al Powell um, in July for his Global Macro Investor. Um, it's about $40,000 a year I think to subscribe to that. <coughs> um, it goes out to countries, sovereign funds, hedge funds, banks, central banks etc. And the title of that article is XRP and why I'm bullish. Um, I'm going to just get into, as I said, some of the price action. I'm going to quote a few things that I said in there, showing you some of the charts from that as well. Um, and yeah, that's it really. So let's just start straight into this. I tweeted out this morning, XRP all time high in April. The only time in this video where I am going to turn, like come a little bit to the fundamentals, not really fundamentals, but outside of the technicals, is I'm just going to relate this first part to um, what I think could be happening, like narrative wise, the lawsuit, etc. So XRP all time high in April is what I tweeted. So I think this is a, a high possibility of something that might happen. Um, people were asking me what my thesis was and why I thought that. So I thought I'd get into that first. Excuse me. We'll just uh, show you technically what I think is a possibility. Um, we, had, we had some hype from this because Digital Perspectives retweeted it and talked about it in his YouTube. Just a bit of a fractal pattern, a bars pattern with an idea of something that potentially could happen. We took this fractal pattern from this section here and overlaid it onto our charts here. It would share a breakout into about the 220 region, come down, back test this, um, this descending trend line here as support, and then would complete a cup and handle pattern, which would take us out to around 450 to 470 mark. So that would be my short term thesis. Um, the, region, the reasons as to why in terms of what's going on outside of just price action, I feel like once we get above that 190 range, which is here, if we get above that 190, 197, 2 dollars, we're above most resistance and our next real resistance is all time high. So we get a breakout above there and can back test that as support or even back test this trend line as support and then push out further. I don't think it would be too difficult to hit those extra percentages um, and break all time high. But what could be a catalyst for that? Obviously an alt season um, would be great, organic movement, but the SEC case, we might get some positive news. I'd be looking at some sort of um, decision on the Hinman emails, that'd be cool. But this is uh, an extra thing to take into consideration here. If we get some positive uh, information on that Hinman email chain, I think we might see a settlement before, but this, this as I'm saying. So the SEC filed for an extension, but this is from March the 21st, so it's not new news, I don't want to like scare anyone again. Um, but in the footnotes was something interesting. So basically, the summary of it is that they're they're trying to file for summary judgment, and they want those briefs to be filed by May. This is Ripple. And XRP Crypto Wolf said, "Is there a possibility of the SEC settling the XRP lawsuit in April or May?" Hogan replies, "Generally speaking, a settlement is most likely after discovery is closed and before summary judgment briefs are filed." We've not quite finished with discovery yet, but almost looks like some re-judgment briefs will be filed in May or June. So before they're filed, that's most time. That's most likely time for a settlement. So that's why I said April, because I think if they're filed in May or June, before that, April. Okay, so we could have some positive news, which could affect price action, obviously. But now let's get into price action. The meat and the meat and green. No, meat and veg. That's what I'm looking for. The meat and veg of this video what everyone's actually here for. We'll start with the short term, really short term, like dailies. We want the daily close above this 200. We've been struggling for a while with it. We've had that um, ascending consolidation and it looks very similar to this pattern here. That's why I took that bars pattern and showed you it because the last real time we had ascending consolidation like this was there 
and that's what we're getting now. But we're still stuck under that support, so until we break that, um, there's no rocket ship emojis from me. We would like a clean break with some continuation candles and a perfect candle break would be nice. Maybe a back test of that support and then push off up towards this resistance here, but we will struggle in this in this area unless we get some decent volume, in my opinion. So they're the things I'm looking for short term. But where can XRP price action go? Where can it go this cycle and where can it go short term? As I've already said, 450-ish. I think we could, it could happen next month. I genuinely do believe that. From there, I've always said that my short term price predictions are 1310-ish. That's where a lot of my exit plan is going to be executed and I can show you why. It's from using Fibonacci retracement tools. Let me have a look. I've got a chat with it all mapped out nicely. I've even got that bars pattern on it there with the breakout target. We'll get rid of that because it just looks a bit messy. Um, get rid of that too. So what am I looking for? Well, the top of this Fibonacci retracement takes us out at 1370. I always try and execute my take profit plans a bit lower than where everyone else is trying to do it. So I mess, so I make sure I definitely get them in. Yes, I'm giving up a few percentage points there, but I'm also hopefully getting my uh, orders filled. So that's why I've targeted that 1310 region. So we're going to go into a few different things now um, as to why I see different price targets. So how can we get to this 1310? How can we get there? First off, we've seen this Fibonacci retracement tool. You can see it here. Pretty simple to draw. All you do is just get this. I'll, actually, I'll draw one out for you right now, um, just to show you guys how to do this. If you don't, if you want to put it on your own charts, pretty simple. We just go to this little tool on the left here. Out Fibonacci, Fibonacci retracement there. And we draw it in from the all-time high down to the low, wherever the low is, the lowest point. Drag it across so you can see it very clearly. That's not quite accurate there. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, I'm going to move this. Oh, I was just going to try and move that trend line thing, that trend line that I've drawn. Just make sure it's right on the wick, give you the most accurate reading, like that. Um, still probably not that accurate, but that's how you draw it in anyway, if you want to put it on your own charts. There you go, bang, take you out. To, it's not quite accurate, it takes to 1390, but if you make it accurate, you'll get the same results as me. As long as you're using the same exchange, because do remember that the all-time high did vary on different exchanges, so that's something to take into consideration. So... Another way we can get up to that 13 sort of dollar mark, this is quite an interesting one that I don't know if you guys know about or not, but in the previous bull run, so we're talking 2017, twice in that bull run, uh, XRP's market cap actually engulfed the market cap of Ethereum. So if we look, this is on coin market cap, by the way, so you just go on uh, coin market cap, you can find these charts for yourself. So it's quite cool because you can highlight them at the bottom here and it shows you the market cap and their dominance in the market. So Ethereum is, is this grey one here and XRP is the blue here. So as you can see here and here, we actually engulfed uh, Ethereum's market cap. I'll show you that in my Global Macro Investor article that I wrote. Uh, I highlighted it here. Um, here and here, we actually do get that uh, engulfing of the Ethereum market cap. So we'll go back to this and I'll show you a few other things about this um, specifically now. So those market cap en encroaches. So the first one was uh, in and around January 2018. Um, the second one, sorry, was here, and this is what I wanted to highlight because this was when we had this market cap cross. It was here just in January 2018. We're talking like the 8th of Jan 2018, and where is that here? So this is in here. Let's six, seven, eight. The 8th of Jan 2018 is right here, right here. Ethereum's nearly at its top there, and that's when that's when XRP's market cap got bigger than Ethereum's when Ethereum was nearly at its all-time high. So even if you took it from right now, Ethereum's all-time high that we've just, if we engulf just that all-time high, uh, Ethereum's all-time high was up at $4,300 from the previous all-time high at $1,300. So just on a, a simple piece of math, that's like, actually, you know what we'll do? That we'll do the exact math. Let's get that calculator open. So $4,300 divided by previous all-time high, which is $1,400 divided by $1,400, whoops, $1,400 equals 
3.07, so that's a 3x from the all-time high. If we work off the basis that XRP's previous all-time high was anywhere between $3.20 and $3.80, depending on what exchange you use, we'll go somewhere in the middle. Let's go for $3.50. That's right in the middle, so we'll go $3.50 times 3 because we've just worked out that it's 3 times the previous all-time high. Where does that take us to? $10.50. So that's within that range just to start with. Something that I think is important so people are looking for 10 to $15 for this range. I'm looking for 13 10 That's my exact top that I'm looking for, that I'm looking for. I don't think Ethereum's actually set its all-time high yet. So that's just going on the basis that Ethereum, that was Ethereum's all-time high would be in that $10.50 region. So now this is something interesting as well. Here is the Ethereum market cap with the XRP in orange, XRP market cap overlaid on top of that. I highlighted two areas as to where I think we might be. This area here, this consolidation period, and this consolidation period. So Ethereum peaks came down, consolidated, pushed up for that final like blow off top sort of area in here. Sorry, let's get this out of the way again. Um, this is towards the end of the year, look, and then we start to break out in November and we topped out in January. That's alt season right there. So that's what I think is hopefully coming now for the alt, for the, for the altcoins. Um, we had a move of, even if we go from here, we can go from here. Let's just go from somewhere in the middle. And we had an extra market cap move of another 264%. That will put another that will put another 2.6 times on the market cap. So again, we'll go for the calculator there, and we'll say that Ethereum. We'll just say that even the all-time high got another 2.64 uh, onto it. So it was a $4,300 all-time high times 2.6 takes it out to an $11,000 Ethereum, which goes in line with a lot what a lot of people are really calling for the $10,000 Ethereum. Whether you think that will or not happen. I don't know, I'm just showing you some different options from the charts here. Um, and if we had an 11,000 Ethereum, we can divide that by the, what, what was the initial high that we were just looking at here. We, we divide that by 1,400. 1,400. It's an 8 times, 7.98. So it's an 8 times um, previous all-time high. We worked out XRP's previous all-time high was 3.350 times 8 would take us up to $28. So do we think that will happen? I don't know. There's definitely an argument for it. You can see it right here. Um, do I think that will happen? As I said, I'm targeting 1310. Anything above that is brilliant. Um, but that's where I'm really going for with my targets. So there's just a few ways, like just market cap wise, I can, like all this is obviously pr like proof. I'm not making any of this up. I'm showing you literal maths. And this is how people find their, their price targets. That's what I'm trying to show you. So you can see clearly here, we're on the coin market cap website. Um, all you do is just come to the top here and just hit that market cap button. Scroll down. You can see all the market caps here. You can do this for yourself. And there you go. That shows you uh, what's happened in previous cycles. So that's market cap uh, talked about, completed. Um, and if we go just on the market cap thesis now, uh, if we look at what ETH market cap is right now, uh, three. 3.75 billion and XRP is 3.9. It's like a 10x that takes it to eight dollars if we went just to where Ethereum's market cap is now. But as I'm saying, I think Ethereum will push up further from this point. Um, before we and and we have only ever um, engulfed Ethereum in, in alt seasons. So when that happens is when I'll be looking for a push. We also can see there was spikes in volume here, and we had that big spike when the market cap came in. We've been fluctuating in volume now. We could be looking for a big spike in volume. Um, I, I really do think we are on the premise of an old season here. Um, but again, it's just my opinion. So let's just talk through a few things that I've got here in this article that I wrote for Raoul Powell, Global Macro Investor. So price action and TA. Uh, in 2017, uh, <coughs> double alt season, we moved at least 10,000 and 32,000 altogether. And we also moved 2,000% in the 2013 bull run. Um, on this on this run so far, this is back from July. I wrote this article. On this run so far, we've only moved six hundred and twenty-five percent. If we take a low estimate of two thousand and complete a further move of one thousand seven one thousand three hundred seventy-five percent from here, on this bull run, it will bring us to thirteen dollars fourteen, as shown in this chart here. If we manage to hit or go above the last major bull run target, because one thing you need to take into consideration, guys, which I didn't actually mention in this in the last chart that I showed you, is that we are in extending cycles, and each cycle has got longer. Um, the price, the percentages haven't necessarily increased, but the price action has. So if we increase from that, we could get a two hundred and seventy-nine dollar XRP. 
Again, these are just maths. This is not me being moon boy. I'm just showing you different mathematical situations that takes out to different price targets. During both 2017 alt seasons, XRP market cap got close to or matched that of Ethereum. If we do that right now, this is probably from July, it will put us at 720. But if you're reasonable, are reasonable to assume XRP could easily create a 10 plus dollar XRP. And then I showed the chart that we just talked about. Um, it also shows that it's when um, XRP nears, it, nears its top in market cap as Bitcoin reaches its bottom. And that's market cap dominance. So I also talk about Fibonacci retracement levels, which we've just talked about. Um, showed that I and I still believe this I think XR uh, Bitcoin will top out at 73 74,000 from this point um, we then talk about ethereum ethereum's top out at 5700 if we do hit the Fibonacci extension I show where they've got to so far in their retracements and where XRP needs to get to if XRP retraced fully we'd have a 1360 if we caught the equivalent top of what Bitcoin's done so far we'd have $12 and Ethereum's top we'd have $10.30 then I go into some of the catalysts and speculative price predictions and talk about a lot of other things in there but I'm just showing you the charts here and we can go into some fundamentals and why I think we could hit higher price targets than that if utility comes in if you'd like that in a, in a following video the last thing I did want to show you, and this is going to be a bit speculative, this is how we can get out to the 50-ish dollar region. So, this is back in 2013, as you can see at the bottom, the dates are here. So this is November 2013, the first ever real bull run that we had in cryptocurrency. This is XRP's price action, it's on the daily time frame. All I've done is put Fibonacci retracement tool on there, but instead of running it from the all-time high, I've taken the, the high from the 0.236 level and put the 0.236 on the all-time high and still dragged it down to the to the low so if you want to mimic this on your charts that's how i've done this pardon me so if we look at the first real impulse in price that we've got obviously you could include that if you want to breaking through all-time high and then it pushing out of this zone but the first real impulse that we get takes us up to the 1.618 level we whipped above it obviously um that's the first impulse Something that I found interesting is, I'm going to just remove these so it's less like dodgy on your, on your eyes. So take that out there. The next impulse we had I took from, again did the same three, same thing, 0.236, down to the low, uh, and show where the next impulse take, took us. Funnily enough, the next impulse took us just above the point, the point, the 2.618. So let's see if I can just get this chart back in there. So, uh, I'm going to be able to see that. Is it going to do it? Yes, okay. So, if you look, we had that extension over the 1.618. Let's have a look. Measure how far above there we got percentage-wise. We got 7% above there on the on the 1.618. And then on the next impulse, the next big pop-up that we had in, in XRP, we went above the 2.618. And how much percentage-wise did we get above there? About 7% above there. So that's an extra um, whole Fibonacci number. So a whole all-time high. That's what that represents where it doesn't in this case because we've drawn it from the 0.236 so if we've drawn it from the 0.236 here and the next impulse took us up if you took it if, if we had it on a on a formulated level so a progressive the first time we went to 1.618 the second time we went to 2.618 the third time could you presume we go to the 3.618 with a 7% push over that if we did all I'm saying is we'd be all the way up here $57 push a 7% push, a push over that, just to mimic what we've done in the past, remember, a progressive push what, from what we've done in the past, we'll be up at $61. I'm going to end the video there. Leave that one in your guys' mind. Let me know what you think in the description section of this video. Subscribe, like, and comment, and share it with a friend if you did enjoy this. Um, I hope you did. I enjoyed making it for you guys. So I'll speak to you in the next one. Uh, let me know what you think. Peace up, A-Town Down, as I should say.